Just the facts, ma'am. Hey all, this video is going to be all about passive cooling methods. This would be if you live in a warmer climate, ways to keep your house cooler and livable if you had to undergo a lengthy power outage, or if you just want to save a lot of money on your air conditioning bill during the summer. I live in the deep south, uh, Georgia, and it gets very hot here. It is also very humid. And this year I'm proud to say that I have not run the air conditioner one time in the house. Because last year I started looking into passive cooling methods, and this year, part of it, yes, I have acclimated a little bit to the warmer temperatures, but primarily it's because I've learned how to keep the house cooler using fans, using windows, and, and other things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And if you're wondering why there's all these old pictures of houses up, that's because these 19th century houses, specifically southern plantation and farmhouse designs, had the latest ideas incorporated into them to keep the houses cooler before electricity. So looking at some of these elements, this house has just about all of them. First of all, we can see it has the wraparound porch. That's specifically to shield the uh, lower windows in the summertime. In the winter, when the sun is lower, it does let light and heat into the rooms. It's also got screen doors. It's got transoms over the doorways. The windows are all double hung, meaning they open from the bottom up as well as the top down. You can see they've got very heavy shades on the upper windows pull-down shades as well as an interior curtain and a lot of these houses also had uh, shutters on the windows to add an additional layer. So let's start by talking about the windows. The double hung windows were important because that allows you to open the lower section of a window on the cool side of the house and then open a corresponding upper section of a window on the warm side to create that airflow that, that shoots through the house and, and takes the hot air out. Many of these houses also had transom windows above the doorways, which you might have seen in older homes and wondered what they're for. It's specifically so you can close the door to a room for privacy, keep a window open, and then have the transom window above the door open. So you're creating that airflow. It's sucking in through the window, it's going up through the transom window, across the ceiling of the house, and then out the other side. Ideally, you want to block the sun before it ever hits the outside of the window. And of course, that's the purpose of the beautiful wraparound porches. Awnings were also very popular around the turn of the century. People were putting them up outside their apartment house windows to block the light. And that's something, if the power is out and you're real desperate, you can figure out some way to block the light on the outside of the house. Another very effective option is heavy thermal curtains. And these work equally well in the summer and the winter. They do a lot to keep the house warm in the winter. One important thing to note, the, the curtains need to be flush to the window frame, sort of like a Roman blind style. If it's sitting away from the window frame, especially in the winter, all the cold air that comes in through the window is just going to be sucked down into the room. Because you've got to create that dead air pocket. And I did uh, make thermal blinds last year heavy, you know, three layers. I actually put a fourth layer in because I put a mylar blanket in between them. And I'm amazed at how cool it keeps the house in the summer, and it helps tremendously with uh, keeping it warm in the winter. If you're crafty and you want to sew your own, own thermal curtains, I've got one tip for you that I learned the hard way. When you've got all the pieces cut out, pin the top of the curtain and sew just the top portion, all three layers together. Then hang that on a rod, and when it's hanging and the sides are straight, now you pin the sides as it's hanging so you get a nice straight even edge that doesn't turn out all wavy and that'll give you a much better finished product. On a side note, if you are also thinking about ways to lower your heating costs in the winter and keep drafts out of the home, I would highly recommend the window film kits. They work amazingly well, especially if you've got an older house or if you've got double hung windows which are infamous for leaks coming through. It looks clear like glass once you've shrunk wrap it to the windows and it really does make a huge difference as far as blocking drafts and, and creating that air pocket. Heat not only comes in the windows during the summer, but a huge amount of it leaves your house during the winter. So if you can seal up the windows and use thermal curtains, you're going to see a huge benefit. Of course, you want to work with the outside temperature by keeping the windows open in the evening and early morning to get as much cold air as possible into the house. And then as soon as it starts to warm up in the morning, you seal the house up tight, pull the shades, close the windows to keep that cool air in until at some point in the afternoon it becomes stifling then you have to start opening windows again. Also cooking outside so you don't create more heat in the house makes a big difference. Think southern barbecue. So a lot of the old southern homes actually had outdoor kitchens just for that reason. 
And of course, fans are also extremely important. Just so you know, a fan does not drop the temperature of a room, unless of course it's drawing in cool air from the outside. What it does do is it lowers your individual temperature. So if you're in a 90 degree room and you turn a fan on and it's blowing on you, you generally feel like it might be 75 degrees, especially if you're sweating or if you've got a little bit of water misting your skin, it's going to make a huge difference. If you do want to get away from using air conditioning all the time, I would highly recommend a little twin fan for the window. It, it makes a tremendous amount of difference and you'll really be amazed. If you live in a dry climate, then you have a lot of evaporative cooling options, which I'm not really going to get into in this video. But a couple of ideas there would be to hang damp sheets or damp screens over the windows so as the air moves through, the air gets cooled off. Another option is to take the old Egyptian trick of sleeping under a damp sheet at night. Um, and as the water evaporates, it has a good cooling effect. If you are into preparedness and you've got any painted shut double hung windows, that might be a good project. It can take quite a while to get some of them open, so I would suggest starting with the ones that are most crucial that are going to give you the best airflow. Do those first. That way, if you get distracted and give up, at least you've got something accomplished. Another good option is to get solar or battery operated fans, which are nice because you don't have to run a generator, don't have to make a lot of noise, it alerts the neighbors. I've never used them. I'm not sure how good they are, but supposedly some of them are fairly decent. Another good prep is keeping some aluminum foil on hand. It does do an extremely good job of blocking sunlight through windows, but be careful. It does get hot and it can crack, especially some of the newer windows. So if you've never used it before, you might want to put a layer of cardboard or something on the outside of the window and then lay the foil on that so that the foil does not get too hot but it can make a huge difference. It does block all of the light, which may or may not be a good thing depending on your situation. Plus, it is very tacky looking, but hey, if the power's out and it's the only way you can survive being in your home, who cares what it looks like from the outside? If you have additional ideas on ways to keep your house cool during an emergency, I would love to hear them. Please add some comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.